This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around it's Josie and the Pussycats, brought to us by Hanna-Barbera. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Duol, the Big D. This, of course, is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So, let's talk about the Josie and the Pussycats cartoon which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary last year. Anyway, the show, of course, is based on the Archie Comics series of the same name and, uh, and premiered on CBS, the same network that had already aired the Archie series from Filmation, along with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which was also from Filmation. Now, let me um bring up my... Source here. Give me a second, everyone. Uh -huh. Sorry, this takes a little longer than I can imagine, but wait, there we go. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, it's of course based on the comics by created by Dan DeCarlo. Uh, the show. And I've already mentioned CBS. It aired from the 1970 to 1971 season and got reran for the following season. Now then, the show features in the the, all, the teenage all girl pop music band that toured the world with their entourage, getting mixed up in strange adventures, spy capers, and mysteries, just like Scooby Doo. Uh, yeah, but unlike Scooby Doo, uh, they travel the world, you know. <laughs> now, the group consisted of their level-headed lead singer, songwriter, and guitarist, Josie, of course, their intelligent bassist, Valerie, and airhead, blonde drummer, Melody. Also in, in the cast are their cowardly manager, Alexander Cabot III, and his conniving sister, Alexandra, and their cat, Sebastian, and muscular roadie, Alan, who, of course, loves Josie, of course. <laughs> Now, the show was more similar to, to the first Scooby-Doo Where Are You series than the actual comic book series of them. Now, mm -hmm. now of course, um, and it's, of course, is the show is remembered for its music, the girls' leopard print leotards, which, of course, includes long tails and ears for hats. You see the theme song. Which, of course, is the, one of the great things I like. And for featuring Valerie as the first regularly appearing female black character in a Saturday morning cartoon show. Now, of course, each episode featured a song of theirs playing over a chase scene similar to the Monkees TV series. I gotta say, it featured a group running away, running after or, or, or away, you, you get the idea, from a selection of haplessly villainous characters. Now, I've seen every episode of the series. Now, the first episode that was shown was The Nemo's A No-No Affair. Which, that was pretty good, actually. Uh, anyway, uh, each episode found our title characters and crew en route to perform a gig or record a song in some exotic location where somehow, often due to something Alexandra did, they became mixed up in an adventure. Now, the antagonist was always a diabolical mad scientist, spy, or criminal who wanted to take over the world using some high-tech device. The pussycats usually found themselves in possession of the plans for an invention, and I'm of interest to the villains, a secret spy message, etc. And the villains chased them to retrieve it. Eventually, the pussycats would ruin the villains' plans, resulting in a final chase sequence set to a pussycat song, where usually you may get to hear, um, among some of the songs you hear include, let's see, Roadrunner, or Inside, Outside, Upside Down, plus a lot of other songs. They're pretty cool, actually. Anyway, when the villains captured... The Pussycats would return to their gig or recording session, 
session, excuse me, and the final gag was always one of Alexandra's attempts to interfere with the Pussycats' performance or steal Alan away from Josie, which ends up in failure every time, and Sebastian always gets a good snicker. Not quite l like the snicker Muttley gives, but <laughs> still pretty good, though. Again, I've seen this, and I... My brothers watched this, well, back in the 70s, and I never did get to see it until I encountered it on Cartoon Network. And as I recall, the first episode I saw was, let's see here, episode number 10, Strange Moon Over Miami. Yeah. I'm just going to say that this has some pretty good episodes. Let's see, there's some other good episodes. Let's see, A Green Thumb is Not a Green a uh, Goldfinger, excuse me, which is episode two. That was a good episode. Let's see here. Hmm. An X marks the spot. That's a good one too. But there's lots of other fun episodes. Anyway, the show ended after after sixteen episodes were produced and aired. And of course continued on for the seventy one to seventy two season. In the next year, they were back again in Josie and the Pussycats in Our Space, which I'll save that for a, a, a later TV log, Saturday morning TV log. But anyway, I gotta say, I loved Josie and the Pussycats. It's one of my favorite Hanna Barbera shows from the 70s. But it's great theme song, great characters, everything. Oh yeah, now some there was some stuff I forgot from some from recent anymore on TV looks, not everything, but anyway, let's go to our our voiced actresses. Voicing Josie is Janet Waldo, who of course was already best known for being the voice of Judy Jetson and Penelope Pitstop from the Wacky Races, voicing Josie. Voicing Valerie is Barbara P Pariot, I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, to my surprise, Melody is voiced by, are you ready for this? Jackie Joseph. I think most of y'all know who that is. If you don't know who that is, you may know she's appeared on, well, various shows, in, well, various programs such as the Dick Van Dyke Show, Hogan's Heroes, plus a lot of other programs. Most but mostly you knew her best as, you probably knew her best as Mrs. Fireman from Gremlins. Yeah, you better believe it. I, I didn't know that was her until I found out about it on um, MeTV's page last year. That's incredible. Voicing Alan is Jerry Dexter, who of course would do some work for Hanna-Barbera. And of course he recently voiced Aqualad in Filmation's Aquaman cartoon. And he also lent his voice to several other cartoons for Hanna-Barbera. Of course, um, amongst some of them include Chuck in Shazam and Gary Gulliver in The Adventures of Gulliver. And he'd go on to voice some several other characters, but that's just... He did lots of voices. Anyway, oh yeah, and once some, um, well, and after the Josie and the Pussycats in Our Space series had ended, after there were, let's see, after another 16 episodes of that series was done, they actually would appear in an episode of the new Scooby-Doo movies, as a matter of fact. Okay, and speaking of Scooby-Doo, voicing Alexander Cabot III is Shaggy himself, Casey Kasem. Voicing Alexandra is Sherry Alberoni, who has who recently had been appearing in as one of Sissy's friends on TV's Family Affair, which of course was on CBS at the time. And doing Sebastian's vocal effects is the voice of the original Scooby-Doo himself, Don Masick. And of course, um, we had um well, different singing voices, too, for the Pussycats. Kathy Doerr at did Josie singing. Patrice Holloway did Valerie singing. And Sherry Moore did Melody's singing voice. Anyway, I want to say Josie and the Pussycats from Hanna Barbera is absolutely funny. I like all the characters. Melody especially because she's just so cute and 
It's just pretty darn funny. Oh yeah, there was one more thing I for I didn't mention about Melody. Um, her ears twitch sometimes too because they only do that when she senses danger. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of something that we would see in some other cartoons. Maybe most notably the filmation Ghostbuster series where um. Jake Kong Jr.'s um, nose twitches when he senses a ghost is around. Yeah. But anyway, Josie and the Pussycats, I do love it. And I think this is a show I would recommend to anybody who's a Hanna-Barbera fan, okay? And of course, there would be a movie that came out in 2001. I will be reviewing that later on this year, so be on the lookout for it. Uh, possibly it'll be about April, which that's when the movie came out 20 years ago, so be on the lookout for it. Okay. But now said, give Josie and the Pussycats a watch. But I think a lot of you have probably already seen this since it's been around for 50 big years. <laughs> wrong, wrong way. I gotta give it the other way around because of... Oh, you get the point. Anyway, what did you think of Josie and the Pussycats? Did you ever watch this show? And tell me what you thought about this in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button below, subscribe to my channel as well, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next Saturday morning when I talk about a show that actually didn't get a star on Saturday mornings, but it also got shown on weekdays, so I just threw this in for Saturday morning TV logs just for fun. Another chick act that rocks with the best gem and the holograms. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other Saturday morning TV logs. In the upper, in the upper left hand corner is my Saturday morning TV log of the show that kind of was sort of a lead into this in a way. Scooby-Doo, where are you? The upper right-hand corner is the new Scooby-Doo movies, which I talked about last October. Or, if you want to catch up, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my last week's Saturday morning TV log of the extremely underrated but sort of infamous Saturday morning show from 1975, Uncle Croc's Block. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.